It was Thursday, four days before the eclipse would pass overhead. I had spent the night in a hotel in La Granda, Oregon, one last night before heading out to meet a group of friends near the Painted Hills to await Monday's exciting event. I had lat-long coordinates and a route I'd plotted on my GPS for our meetup point. We were arriving four days early, anticipating that thousands of like-minded adventurers would also arrive in the coming few days. Good morning everyone. Welcome to day eight of the solar expedition. It is Thursday before the eclipse on Monday. And today I am meeting up with Jack, Tad, and some friends of theirs. I'm driving from La Grande to Mitchell, then up to our campsite. Cool abandoned homestead in this big meadow. There's the home there. And over here the corral and stables. I'm stopping in Yakaya, getting some gas. This guy right here tells you where the gas pump is. It's right over there. Something you see plenty of here is walking. Here's something to think about. Which agency do you think in the United States has the most miles of road to maintain? She might stop and think, well, it probably is some federal agency. Well, it must be the Department of Transportation. But you'd be wrong. Or maybe you think, hey, the Department of Transportation doesn't really do a lot of road maintenance. They kind of leave that up to the states. Yeah, hey, Alaska doesn't have that much in the way of roads. It must be Texas. It must be the Department of Transportation for Texas. Wrong again. The most miles of road maintained the United States, provide the United States Forest Service, provide access not only to the logging trucks and other mineral extraction industries, but to those of us who overland. Seven million years ago, 80 miles to the south of here, there was a volcanic eruption. Ashes and gas from that eruption flowed through this valley below, causing the formations that you see. Straight ahead is Picture Gorge. It's called Picture Gorge because there are Native American pictographs high up on the walls. It includes seven layers of lava from various volcanic eruptions separated by the ash from those volcanic eruptions. Later in geological history, a fault beneath the Earth's crust caused a crack to actually form. I have no idea what this is except it's a tree f full of shoes. When I first stopped here, there was a young man and a couple of young ladies with him, and they asked if I'd seen the tree about a mile and a half ago with the bras in it, and I said no. I I missed that one, but it's a little too late for me to go back for it. So uh, they threw their two pair of shoes up and uh, have left. So I'm using the app Copilot GPS to give me turn-by-turn uh, -turn guidance to Mitchell. Once I get to Mitchell, I'm going to switch to Backcountry Navigator. And I've plotted the route to the campsite on it. Yep. 
this is the wrap. Looking at this, you can tell that, that they recently put these big stones here. Ted had checked this route out a couple weeks ago and uh, decided that we would camp up here. And I guess the, that the BLM decided they didn't want anybody back here, even though they've got it all signed for uh, having people back here. It says designate a route over on that small sign on the left. There was another dirt road. It's not on my map. I'm going to go up here a little ways and see if maybe it does merge with the other road, which is over here to the left. I'm going over to the other one. Well, just end right here. So, I guess uh, the backup plan is to go back to Mitchell, see if I can find them. I don't have cell phone service. Well, there's my handiwork. It don't do any good because just as I put the last stone on the rock cairn, up they drove. So there's a campsite up here that I passed uh, several times while trying to figure out exactly where the route was. So, we may end up here. See how we fit. After searching around for a while, checking out various possible campsites, we ended up just a couple hundred yards from uh, where the rocks were blocking the access uh, at another, what is essentially a campground here, BLM land. So there's other people with us, not a problem, seems to be a friendly group. Tell me about that uh, pretty cool looking grill there. Uh, this is the Volcano Grill, I'm really happy with it, it's, uh, it uses very little propane when propane grill. It's a three fuel, so you can use wood for a wood fire, or you can do charcoal, propane, and they have a whole bunch of other accessories. Yeah, the wind changed. It's coming up the mountain now, or down. I think it's gotten warmer. Yeah, <laughs> going, the opposite, yeah. going the opposite way than it was. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning everyone. Welcome to day nine of the solar expedition. We are close to Painted Hills. It is uh, 5.30 in the morning and I am headed over to Painted Hills to get a few photographs as the sun rises. This is supposed to be very similar to those hills in China that you may have seen photos before. to the park at Painted Cove. I'm going to head back to uh, campground. It's uh, 8.45. I've been here about two and a half hours. Once back at the campground, we relaxed that day and discussed plans to drive part of the Oregon backcountry discovery route. Jack and I checked out our ham radios, but mine was blowing a fuse, so we also troubleshot that. We became concerned later that afternoon when we saw smoke high in the skies overhead where these things were stuck together right there. Oh, yeah. K7BRW, KG5LXN, how copy? Since the Painted Hills are only about five miles away from our campsite, I decided to drive over here and uh, check and see what they might know about this smoke. And what I learned is kind of good news and bad news. The good news is that it's not a fire that's of any real threat to us. 
the bad news is that's because it's from the sister's fire that's been going on for a week or two in another part of Oregon. The winds have shifted and are blowing the smoke over us. That could severely hamper our, our visibility of the eclipse. That smoke is giving us a really pretty sunset tonight. It had been an easy day, mostly hanging around the campground. Our original plan was to overland the OBDR Route 4 until Sunday evening, when we'd arrive at our campsite for the eclipse on Monday. However, rumors of enormous crowds convinced us we should find our campsite early, then venture out from there. While Tad, Chuck, and their families remain at camp the next day, Jack, Callie, Hendrix, Josh, AJ, and I would run some of the originally planned route. Good morning, everyone. It is Saturday. A few of us are headed out to explore a little bit of some of the Oregon backcountry. We were concerned about how busy the roads are. We've heard uh, stories about uh, Prineville. Anyway, that won't affect us today. Looks like we got about oh, four or five miles to go right now. Hey, Jack, let me speak to Callie for a second. You're not a race car driver, are you? No. You got to drive a stick shift? I've driven your car before. Oh, that's right. You did drive it. Okay. Gear straight ahead. Just a gorgeous view from up here. Long Summit Road. Oh my. Okay, Josh is gonna pull forward and we're gonna try pulling this tree from this side to get it clear of the road, and then that way I can pass under it. Yeah, it's gonna put a cut in it, so it, with luck it'll break once we start winching it, and we just clear the half in the road that falls. It fell right as I shot a still picture. <laughs> Maybe you got it. No, I got the still picture. That's what I meant. Oh, but it stops recording? Yeah, it stops recording. Tree is cleared out of the way. Jack and Josh, of course, were able to get under the tree. I wasn't with the, my antennas and maybe my rack. The tree, um, the tree grill has seven slants and, or flashes, and then the over their headlights. Oh, okay. You mean, you didn't know that, Josh? Oh, I see. You have square headlights. That's why it didn't ring. <laughs> I was a BJ. Put it on the walker. This is my kind of four-wheeling. a fire tower on Wolf Mountain. 170 feet tall wood, tallest wooden fire tower in North America. And the tower is manned right now and you can see them up there. Had a nice visit to the uh, Wolf Mountain Lookout Tower. Because it's manned right now, they don't allow visitors up in the tower.
While there had been some small challenges in getting the group together and our plans had to change due to the increasing number of other expected visitors, we were still able to see much from our original itinerary and with a good measure of solitude. Tomorrow, Jack's family and I would explore north of our BLM campground. But tonight, we'd relax and enjoy the company of some of our campground neighbors.